So, about a month ago, I published a quick video where I shared my progress on the Unity YouTube course by CodeMonkey. And guess what? CodeMonkey actually shared my work on his channel and gave me some amazing encouragement to keep going and publish a game on Steam. You were a lot to leave really nice comments on the video, so thank you so much for your support, it was truly motivating. So welcome to my first devlog! I'm Eliane, and this is what my game looks like one month later. To give you a quick overview, in this game you play as a friendly little ghost cooking in the underworld. Yeah, basically I found these adorable ghost assets on the Unity Asset Store and I just had to use them. So I decided to make everything about all sorts of supernatural beings wanting to eat a good meal. You have to serve these customers as quickly as possible, they can leave funny reviews about their experience that will influence your reputation as a chef. You will also have to clear the tables, do the dishes, and collect your well-earned money, which you then can use to upgrade your restaurant, unlock new recipes, and improve your own skills. As you can probably tell, the graphics of the game changed a lot compared to my previous video. I've been on a quest to find that perfect cozy, cute, and colorful atmosphere I want for my game. I'm not really used to that, and trust me, it's been quite a journey. I've played around with various color palettes, some of them a bit eccentric, before finally settling on one that I think looks pretty nice. I also decided to switch up the camera angle to a slightly less overhead view. I wanted to show a bit more detail and give the game a better look overall. Another feature I've added is a simple day and night cycle. Another major difference with CodeMonkey's tutorial is the possibility to upgrade your restaurant and your skills. When you start your adventure in the underworld, you and your restaurant basically suck. But with each passing day, you earn more and more money and you can improve everything. You can, for example, increase your speed, do some marketing to attract more customers, do some training to be a better chef and a better waiter, or add some decorations to get better reviews, increase your restaurant's reputation, and make the customers pay more. I added a lot of new recipes compared to CodeMonkey's tutorial. Now we've got cupcakes and donuts, each with their own variety of delicious icing and sprinkles, as well as some wiped cream. You can do a lot of different combinations and create delicious dessert for your customers. You can also serve different beverages. I first created a coffee machine that can brew coffee when you put a mug under it. You also have a kettle and you need to fill it with water from the sink to make bold water that you can then use to make different kinds of teas. I applied a very good practice I learned while following CodeMonkey's tutorial which is interfaces. Basically, here, every object that can be moved and that can carry a beverage, like a kettle, for example, shares the same interface with some basic functions. This made things easier to code and allowed me to add multiple types of beverages in no time. For example, I decided to add a blender that can mix fruits to make fresh juices. So now we also have orange juice, strawberry juice, orange and strawberry juice, and basically everything you want. I may even consider adding some soups later, because why not?
You can also stack your mugs and your plates and carry huge piles of dishes around to be more efficient whenever a customer is done and waits for you to clean that table. Once again, the use of interfaces really helps keeping the project organized and easy to deal with. But if you're tired of walking all around the place and would prefer to focus on actually making food and serving it to your hungry customers, you can buy an upgrade to make the tables clean themselves. You also have to do the dishes if you want some clean plates. It's another thing I added that wasn't on the original ConMonkeys video. You will eventually have a lot of plates and mugs to wash, but guess what? You can upgrade your sink so that it magically cleans your dishes for you. And moreover, you can also do both at the same time, efficiently managing your kitchen and keeping those dishes under control. But magic is only temporary and you will have to buy the spells again once they are wore out. I created a customer script as well as a customer manager and I made sure to follow the same clean code principles as before. Speaking of customers, I got some free assets for the several creatures that you can host and I created a lot of unique animations to make the place feel more alive. And I'm not gonna lie, that was not my favorite part. Animation is a tough process, even when working with already rigged characters, and I had to start again from the beginning several times in order to have satisfying animations. I had to come up with a name for the game and it's called... Hellspresso. I created a Steam page for the game, it's still a draft and I will update it soon. I still have a lot of work to do, I would like to implement a lot of new recipes, new levels with more magic things, new upgrades, new decorations and more customization options. I'm also considering adding multiplayer even if I have no experience whatsoever with that. But I know CodeMonkey covers it in his Kitchen Kao course, so I will probably follow it as well and try to adapt it to my game. I think it can add a lot of fun to the experience compared to a single player game, but maybe it's a lot of work for not a lot of added value to the game. I don't really know, so tell me what you think in the comments. That's it for today, I hope you enjoyed this update. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow my progress. Thanks again for joining me on this journey and I will catch you in the next devlog.